Shinobi. It's Japanese for stealth. The perfect description of a ninja master. And that's exactly what you are. Armed with throwing stars and finely honed battle skills, you must defeat the Ring of Five. Fight your way past mercenaries and karate thugs. Take out the meanest martial artists and rescue hostages. But these dangers pale in comparison to your ultimate challenge. A fight to the death against five evil ninja assassins whose mastery of the deadly ancient arts may well surpass your own. Now that sounds pretty cool. Unfortunately, what we're playing here is Shinobi from Tenjin, released in 1989. Now, where Circus Caper from yesterday pretty well split. Nine out of ten and four and a half out of ten. We've got 2.2 .2 out of 10, 5.9 out of 10, and 3 out of 10. Let's, let's watch and see if we can figure out why. Shinobi is a side-scrolling action game produced by Sega, originally released for the arcades in 1987. In Shinobi, we control a modern-day ninja named Joe Musashi, who goes on a mission to rescue his kidnapped students from a group of terrorists. Shinobi was later adapted by Sega to their Master System game console, followed by licensed third-party conversions to other platforms such as the NES, PC Engine, and various home computers, as well as downloadable emulated versions of the original arcade game for the Wii and Xbox 360. The success of Shinobi inspired the development of various sequels and spin-offs. The arcade Shinobi? Pretty darn good. The console Shinobi's? Pretty darn bad. <clears throat> we control Ninja Joe Musashi who has to stop a criminal organization called Zeed, who are kidnapping the children of his ninja clan. Through five missions, consisting of three stages for the first mission and four stages each for the rest, Musashi must make his way to Zeed's headquarters and free all the hostages. In the first two or three stages, before confronting the boss at the final stage in each mission. At the start of each mission, a player is shown their objective, followed by a file containing a photograph of the enemy boss and a map display pinpointing the location on the next stage. In Mission 1, Pursue the Terrorists, we are set in the slums of a city. The boss is Ken O, a gigantic samurai-like ninja who can throw fireballs. In Mission 2, Enter the Enemy's Hideout, is we're in a harbor. The boss is the Black Turtle Attack Helicopter, which drops off an army of yellow-clad ninjas. Yes, it's true. Mission 3, Attack the Logistics Base, is set in a secret base hidden within a cave. And the boss is a lineup of stack up Mandara statues controlled by a supercomputer who take the form excuse me which takes the form of a giant fireball spitting face like computers could do in the 1980s mission 4 destroy the enemy ninja group set in a ninja training camp the boss is the lobster a tall sword wielding ninja clad in red samurai armor with a v-shaped symbol on his helmet and mission 5 defeat the behind the scene ninja the Ninja of Oz, I guess. Set in the mansion of the enemy leader. Unlike the previous mission, the player is not allowed to continue if he loses all of his lives at this point. The final boss is Z's leader, the masked ninja, who attacks with four different, nin different ninjutsu techniques. His true identity is revealed to be, I'm not telling you. You're just gonna have to play the game or watch somebody else do it. Uh, Sega's own port of Shinobi was released on the Master System to general critical acclaim and is often considered one of the best games on that system. Classic Game Room reviewed it and uh, reflected that the view of the game is a classic, albeit less of a classic than the 16-bit sequel, Revenge of Shinobi, which is also very good. The NES system we're going to talk about specifically. Uh, this was released by Tenjin exclusively as an unlicensed copy in 1989. The play mechanics are based on the Master Systems version. However, Tenjin removed all of the close-range weapons, like the sword, the nunchaku, and the chain, and the grenades. Only the basic punches, kicks, throwing daggers, and pistol were kept. Unlike the Master System version, the player can only shoot one shuriken, dagger, or bullet, and only one can be on screen at the same time, even after obtaining power-ups. However, the maximum stock of ninjutsu skills has been increased to five. And all of the vertical scrolling stages were redesigned into horizontal scrolling stages. In 1989, Sega released a follow-up called Revenge of the Shinobi, or The Revenge of Shinobi, I guess, as one of the first titles for the new Mega Drive. In Japan, this game is called The Super Shinobi. An arcade sequel called Shinobi Dancer was also released in 89. 
or Shadow Dancer, excuse me. Shadow Dancer retains the same gameplay as the original. The main character gets a canine companion, so it's dead to rights. Other Shinobi sequels also appeared for the Game Gear, Mega Drive, and Genesis, Sega Saturn, and PlayStation 2, and most recently, the 3DS. Alex Kidd in Shinobi World is a parody of Shinobi with former Sega mascot Alex Kidd as the main character and was released in 1990. There's also a string of games going from Shinobi, Revenge of the Shinobi, Shinobix. You remember Shinobix? Sure you do. Uh, the arcade version is great. The Sega versions are great. The Tengen version on the NES is pretty bad. I would avoid it if I were you. 